Okay guys, so uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you a pretty neat trick. Um, it has to do with um, how to nest an animation within a symbol or how to embed a symbol with animation, right? Now, you know, first and foremost, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, here I have uh, my Bob Marley character right here. Um, I can... Okay, I'll show you the two ways. The first way is I can when I double click on this main symbol, it takes me into uh, the individual symbols. See, now I can access all the symbols individually. Now, notice if you look here on, on the um, this panel, you see scene one, which is on the outside, and then when I click on the character, it takes me in it. So this is saying BB one model. It means that I am within the major uh, the main character's symbol, right? So now I've access to all the individual symbols and I can, you know, animate them as I choose. So <clears throat> I could create uh, some frames here and then, you know, do something simple within that, okay? So say for example, uh, I could create, just say one keyframe at frame, uh, frame five, okay? Then I just animate um, his arm, okay? Something pretty simple here. So. All right, there you go. All right. <clears throat> Notice I put keyframes at five, even for the uh, the body parts I didn't change. It doesn't matter, okay? So there I have it. Now, I pretty much have a symbol that's animated. If I give him the five frames, he'll execute that animation. Notice I don't have to put a keyframe anymore because the animation is already in it. See, there you go. That's the animation I just created. And it's already embedded in this symbol. So that's the first and easy way to do an uh, uh, embed uh, a symbol with an animation. So if I were to delete this um, symbol, I'll delete it. And then uh, create a new layer. And then um, drag that symbol. Here's a symbol. And I drag it from the, um, from the library. Actually, you can even test it here by clicking play. See, he executed that same animation. So here is the guy. <clears throat> now that's an animation within a symbol, pretty simple. Uh, now there's another way to do this. Um, <clears throat> I'll just get rid of this symbol with my logo. So say for example, um, let's go in. I didn't have, I, I, I uh, the second method I'm gonna show you is, it's pretty useful for when you have an entire scene. Now, say for example, notice I just removed that animation so he's not doing anything anymore. Now, <clears throat> say for example, I uh, I have a scene on the outside, right? Meaning like I have not only the character, but I'm animating him along with a lot of different things. So I'm gonna break this apart and then um, distribute them all to um, layers, right? Distribute them to layers. It's gonna do that. Good. <clears throat> so now I have this guy, and uh, I'm gonna do same animation again. This is the second method, and this is useful for when you have um, you have like multiple things, whether it's like a, like a whole scene you want to capture in an animate in a symbol, and you can do that. You can capture a whole like say for example I had. Um, <clears throat> uh, some some object. Let's say uh, okay. Oval tool. Let's create something here. No, actually, I'll make that in the layer above. See, I'm putting it in its own layer, right? Right, so let's say that's uh, a ball he has right here. <clears throat> and when he does this, Okay, 
when he does this, the ball goes flying, right? Okay. So when he does this, the ball goes flying. So it's uh, like that. So this is the animation. Uh, make that a keyframe. There you go. All right. <clears throat> so basically, I want to make that whole thing a symbol. How do I do that? I highlight the whole, all the frames from for every layer. And I make sure all the layers are unlocked, okay? So if I have them locked and I have three unlocked, only the two or three that are unlocked will actually be copied. I want to copy all these. I'm going to try to copy all these frames for all the layers. So I start from the first layer of the first the first frame of the first layer and I highlight all of them, right? Basically, it's like a select all. Then I right click, copy frames, and then what I do from here is I create a new symbol, Command F8. And this will be Bob throwing ball up. That's the name of the symbol, right? And I leave it as a graphic symbol, enter, and now now this is basically the, the empty new symbol I'm creating. It doesn't have anything on the stage, no layers. I'm going to have to fill it in. So I right click and I'm gonna paste all those layers that I just copied. Paste, and there you go. And now if I look in my library, that's where you always go to verify you know, if your symbol was created or not. You go then here it is, Bob throwing ball up. And <clears throat> generally you'll be given the option once a symbol is created, you will be given the option to, to play the, um, the animation right here. You'll see a little play button will pop up. I guess it, oh, there it is. So when I play it, there's the animation. All right? And it's, I mean, it's pretty simple, but it could be for anything, however complicated you, you have. Um, of course, understand the more complicated the animation or the more details that's there, the, the longer it will take to, to make that symbol. <clears throat> but any anything that you have on a scene can be copied into a symbol. That's pretty much what I mean. You can copy anything within a symbol. And this is pretty good because you can have a series of scenes and pretty much just paste them next to each other on, along the timeline. So you can have a symbol play into a next symbol into a next symbol. And it's, it's, it's that simple. So it's not a matter of just, you know, having an animation within, like, the, the character symbol. You can actually make the whole scene a symbol, which is what I just did. And I'll show you that uh, really quickly by highlighting all the all the, the layers, and I'll delete that. And um, so now I have the empty stage, and I'll just drag this guy onto the stage, <clears throat> and I'll give him enough frames to play with. You know, I'll give him, uh, say, 20 frames and uh, it will pretty much just, see? And notice he's doing the same thing over and over, and that's because when I click on this symbol and go to properties, you'll see the looping setting. It's set to loop. Loop means it's pretty much just cycles the action over and over again. So once it plays and it's completed, it will repeat itself infinitely until I tell it to stop. <clears throat> if I hit play once, it will just execute the animation once, and then it will stop, and that's it. See? That's it. <clears throat> if I hit uh, single frame, it will not do anything, and it will it will the animation will stuck or stay at whatever frame that I choose. Right now, it's stuck at frame one. It doesn't say that, but it's at frame one, and it will not move. <clears throat> so this is a pretty cool way of freezing uh, an animation that you have within a symbol, and it will not. Uh, do anything until you tell it to, right? So until you tell it to play once or loop, nothing will happen. Uh, another cool thing is that you can have it start wherever you want along the timeline, and I'll do that. I'll just uh, select the keyframe, which is which has the symbol. The symbol is within this keyframe. And I can put it anywhere along the timeline that I want. I could put it at 40, and the animation will not start start playing until it hits 40. So I'll give it some plain, some some uh, frames to play. 
uh, let's see, at five, and it will not play until it hits 40. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> I could also, um, and notice he, he pops into the, the scene at 40. If I wanted him to, to um, let's see, uh, I could have him appear on the scene at uh, frame one and not play until he's at uh, frame 30. And that's simple. All I do is at frame one, I hit that single frame. And then at frame 30, I select in the property, I hit loop. See, so now <clears throat> the guy will not play until 30. See, pretty simple. And you can play with it in many different ways. So, you know, I hope you guys learned a lot from this. It's uh, how to nest an, a symbol with animation. But, and this is not just a traditional way of just putting, you know, an animation within a single symbol. This is how to actually put a whole scene within one symbol. And that way you can put it anywhere you want along the timeline. So say, for example, you could have um, from frame one to frame 30 be like your opening credits, your music, your introduction to the, to the animation, whatever. And then you actually have it start at 30. You know, there's many, it's up to your, anima your uh, imagination how you use it. But hopefully you guys learned a lot.